question for you and I to ask is whether these actions can be justified in light of the teachings of Jesus or in spite of them. We may not be in a world war, but today we are a world at war. Over the past few years, we have seen more armed conflict than at any time since the end of 1945. And in the shared secular consciousness, the instinct is often to look at religion as the cause behind this increase of conflict around the world. As Victor Stinger says, science flies you to the moon, religion flies you into buildings. But is religion really to blame for the major conflicts of our world? Well, when you open up, say, a Christian Bible, there do seem to be mixed messages. Are Christians meant to love their enemies and turn the other cheek? Or should they take up the sword to defend the weak and constrain evil? How does the Christian story speak to the violence all around us? What does the Bible say about war? Well, to start with, let's deal with whether religion is to blame for the major conflicts around our world. Leaving aside the complication that for about 50 years now, the Academy has had no universal way of even defining religion, it certainly is the case that religious beliefs and ideas have served as a pretext for war and violence throughout human history. But even then, the number is nowhere near as high as we might think. Take the Encyclopedia of Wars, this three-volume set published in 2008 that has tracked over 1,763 wars over 10,000 years of human history. How many of these were classified as religious? Only 121. That's just under 7% of all wars accounting for less than 2% of all people killed in the history of warfare. And of this 7%, 3.75%, just over half of all religious wars, were waged by Islam. So is religion to, to blame for all the major conflicts of our world? No, the numbers just don't lie. War is not a specifically religious problem, it's a universal human problem. As historian uh, Karen Armstrong writes, it's simply not true that religion is always aggressive. Sometimes it has actually put the brake on violence. Now there is no doubt that the history of Christianity is marred by heinous violence with Christians justifying their violence by invoking the name of God. But the important question for you and I to ask is whether these actions can be justified in light of the teachings of Jesus or in spite of them. What does the Bible actually say about war? The short answer is tons, and some of that can be quite confronting. But broadly speaking, the Bible says three things about war. Number one, war is the fallout of human sin. Beginning with a seemingly trivial act of disobedience in Eden, Things escalate rapidly from sibling homicide to where tools of war become a trade by Genesis 14 with the first recorded military conflict in the great battle of the kings. War is a fallen reality, not a part of God's good design. Number two, because war is a fallout of human sin, God's people should strive for peace and justice. Time and again, the prophets of old called God's people to act justly, to take up the cause of the fatherless and to plead the case of the widow. Jesus even said things like, blessed are the peacemakers. And the Apostle Paul spoke of our vocation as Christians, um, like being ministers of reconciliation. So God's idea of peace, shalom, isn't simply the absence of conflict, calling only for passivity on our part. It is something of a practical directive for all believers to actively pursue as we live east of Eden in a fallen world. Number three, and finally, the Bible says that wars will one day cease. A day is coming when the Prince of Peace will return to earth to set everything right, smithing weapons of conflict into tools of cultivation as he restores all things to the way they were always meant to be. Now, of these three points, most Christians tend to agree with the first and the third. War is a fallout of human sin and wars will one day cease, which leaves us then with point two. God's people should strive for peace and justice. How are we to do that? Is it possible to strive for peace and justice without engaging in violence? That is the issue that tears the Christian conscience apart. Not whether war is ever okay, but whether it is in all cases entirely avoidable. How do we war against war, so to speak? The Bible's broad teachings on the moral dilemmas of war have contributed significantly to two predominant ethical theories about the place of war in our world, namely pacifism and just war theory. Pacifism is the general view that it is not right to participate in war and that disputes should be settled by non-violent means, at least wherever possible. Christians who adopt a pacifist stance appeal to various themes in scripture to justify their position. Uh, things like Jesus' teaching about non-violence and unconditional love, even towards our enemies, as exemplified in his Sermon on the Mount. 
Uh, they also point to the concept of trust and God's divine providence, with the supreme example being the cross of Christ, where it seemed like evil uh, triumphed violently over good, but God's power reversed the defeat through Jesus' resurrection from the dead, uh, showing how evil can be swallowed up by love. And third, through appeal to the reality that Christians are citizens of God's kingdom, where even though some pacifists recognize the right of the state to go to war, Christians, they believe, should conscientiously object as we are primarily representatives of God's spiritual kingdom. On the other side of the situation table sits just war theory, which is the view that while war is undesirable, it can be morally justifiable under certain conditions. Now, importantly, just war theory does not try to justify war as a good in itself, but it seeks to bring justice to the inescapable reality of war by advocating such things as just reasons for war, just conduct in war, and just outcomes of war. Like pacifism, there are many Christians who hold to a just war theory ethic, and they argue their, their view from the contours of Scripture. For example, the moral distinction in killing, the same God that commanded thou shalt not murder, also sanctioned capital punishment for certain crimes. So while all murder is killing, evidently not all killing is murder. Second, pragmatic necessity. This is the messy situational ethics we see all throughout scripture, where there seems to be precedent for taking a lesser of two evils approach in the pursuit of a higher good, especially protecting the weak and innocent. And a third reason just war theorists will point to is government authority, specifically the apostles' teaching about the separation of church and state and the role of the government in bearing the sword to bring about justice. Now, as ethical theories, both pacifism and just war theory have their strengths and their weaknesses, but which one's right? Which one does the Bible support? It's complicated. You know, as we've seen, both can be supported by what the Bible says, which is why Christianity doesn't openly endorse or outright reject going to war, but offers instead a framework for discernment, acknowledging a host of moral complexities. And this is why I think that those of us privileged with enough peace to think about war should do so, respecting biblical fidelity and individual conscience in the process. But what Christianity clearly does advocate is the towering figure of Jesus who puts a check on our violent impulses, who teaches us to love our enemies and inspires our moral genius to find unique ways to strive for peace, even when that comes at great cost to ourselves. So in the meantime, until we wait for him, Jesus, to return, as wars continue to tear up those whom God loves around our world, Christians are to engage in the prophetic act of lament, expressing the practical love of God in serving those affected by the brutal realities of war, all the time longing for that day when swords will be hammered into plowshares. Dan here from Questioning Christianity. Thanks so much for checking us out. We are all about helping you connect the Christian story to life's deepest questions. So if you're enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe and click the bell on YouTube and then go ahead and follow us on socials.